Hey guys, Tony Maritato here. So I wanted to take a minute to introduce this little pedal bike. You saw the link for it. It is an Amazon affiliate link. I do get a commission if you buy the bike, but it's the cheapest, most economic bike I've found. We actually use this bike in the clinic. So it's usually about $17 to $22, depending on when you buy it. Um, it comes in basically three pieces. These bottom legs come apart. There's a little screw that turns. They, they attach in pretty quick. This top knob comes off. This is your manual resistance. Look, it's not high quality in terms of how smooth and great it feels, but it's pretty sturdy. I mean, it's all metal. There's nothing that's gonna break on here. And you're using it for short term, kind of get back to, to moving that knee, working on your range of motion at home. So for 20 bucks, it's worth what it's worth. But that being said, let me show you how to use it because I think most people get kind of hung up on what to do with it once they get it. So my chief priority is your safety. And my biggest concern when anybody tries to use one of these little bikes is that you don't tip over in your seat. And what I mean by that is when I put my feet on here, it's real easy for me to push myself back so hard that the chair actually tips over. So usually what I try to do is set people up where the chair is back against the wall, something that can't move. You set the bike somewhere in front of you. I'll tell you right now a little trick. Either just cut these straps off or don't even use them and put your foot on top of the pedal, which is actually technically the bottom of the pedal. You leave this strap down here. The straps are too small for most feet, so I don't even know why they put them on there. But I set the bike in front of me. If you're limited with how much range of motion you have through your knee, the bike's gonna be further away from you. As your range gets better, the bike can move closer to you. I'm gonna set it kind of in the middle so we can just use it as a demonstration. I put my feet over the top, just like I said. And so you can see how the knee is bent. Um, a couple little cues when you're setting yourself up. One of the things that I see quite, probably the most often, let's see here, I want to get the camera straight on, is that when somebody puts their feet on the pedals, they let their knees collapse inward. If my knee is collapsed in, when I look down, I cannot see the inside of my ankle. That little bony bump right there, I want a clean line of sight to that through the entire rev revolution of the cycle. Whether I'm on a regular bike, this kind of bike, recumbent bike, any bike, your eyes should be able to see, this is called your medial malleolus, I wanna see that bony bump on the inside of my ankle. If my knee collapses in because of my hip or anything else, it, I don't have clear view, this is not the optimal alignment for your brand new knee. It's not an optimal alignment for anybody's knee. So every time I put somebody on a bike, I open them up, I explain to them, no, this isn't necessarily the way you're gonna use it all the time, but when we're working on range of motion, when we're working on recovery, we'll exaggerate certain things. In this case, we're gonna exaggerate the knees apart. So as I start to spin, if I don't have enough range of motion through the knee, maybe what I do, let's, let's pretend it's my left knee, it was replaced, it's swollen, it's hot, it's angry, it doesn't want to bend. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of bring it up and back. Up, my right leg, the non-surgical leg is the one that's pushing and pulling. The surgical leg is just kind of going along for the ride. In fact, depending on the cycle, I could even just rest my leg up there. And so now what happens is this leg actually creates a little bit of a traction force to pull at the ankle. Now what's gonna happen is this is gonna slide around on you. But again, we're making the best of a difficult situation. So understand there's limitations on, on what we can do, but it's a $20 investment. So I can work it back and forth. I can wobble from the hip, internal, external rotation. I can go reverse revolution first. Once I make that full revolution, let's say for example, I'm close but not quite there. One way that you can cheat 
is to kind of put the heel of your surgical foot on the pedal and then the ball of your foot from your non-surgical leg on the pedal. What that essentially does is it shortens the amount of distance you have on the surgical side and gives you a little more reach on the non-surgical side. So I can kind of come around here with, I'm gonna turn sideways so you guys can see. So let's just say we're here and I'm just really struggling. Oh, I can't get it over the top, it's just too tight. So I come down on my non-surgical side, the, the right side in this case, to give myself a little more reach. My left one can go straight and bend. I can move it, the pedal more toward the heel and that lets me get a little better extension, but it also makes me required to have less flexion. And so usually what happens is once you get it going and you do get that full revolution, then maybe you inch it down so now it's not quite on the heel, it's a little closer to the arch. And then as it's going a little better, I can bring it down a little more. And I just keep working myself back until I'm at the ball of the foot on both pedals. And once that becomes easy going backward, I can switch directions and go forward. I can focus on using the muscles behind the knee, almost like a scooping action. So the ankle is involved. As the pedal goes forward, my knee extends, I point my toe and I kind of scoop it back. You'll feel the muscles behind the leg in the hamstring working to pull. And then as I come over the top, I flex my ankle and I push. So there should be some ankle involvement as much as there is knee and hip involvement. I think too many times we just get on the cycle and think, well, I'm just gonna pedal because that's what I did as a kid. But there's really a lot more that you can do with this. Once again, so you get kind of a different perspective. I can have my non-surgical foot on the pedal. I can have my surgical foot resting where the pedal is right behind the ankle, kind of bottom of the calf. And so what I'm doing is my right foot is pulling the bike toward me, which is creating a traction through my surgical side. It feels good, it's relaxing, it's certainly not painful. If it's painful, don't do it. There's a difference between pain and discomfort. It's okay to work with discomfort, it doesn't need to be painful. Um, there's going to be times where maybe you just, you feel like, oh, I just can't move the knee. That's fine. Put the foot on there and just use it to pump your ankle. This little bit of resistance is going to be more effective than just pumping your ankle in the air. And if you notice, if you pay attention right here, as I'm moving that ankle, my knee is flexing, extending also. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a person... I'll bring them back to kind of end range. Like let's say I get them to right here. They're like, ah, that's it. I don't want to go any further. Okay, just keep that position. I'll come under the thigh, give it a little bit of support. I'm kind of pulling it into me. And then I'm just going to pump that ankle. Pump the ankle. And then I'll slide my foot down and I'll pump it a little more here. And then slide my foot and I'll pump it a little more here. And that pumping gets the gastroc, this muscle back here, the soleus, the gastroc, these muscles are working, the knee is moving inadvertently, um, but I'm giving it a little bit of support. And then sometimes from there, I can kind of start to work back through from a, a arcing motion to eventually a full revolution. So the other nice part about this kind of device is that then I can take it, I don't have any good countertops here, but I could put it up on a countertop, I could stand in front of it, and I can use my arms on the pedal up on the counter. So remember, this is sitting on the kitchen counter, I'm using my arms, I'm doing the pedaling, I could do it standing most likely, which gives me more time on my feet. So there's just a whole bunch of things you can do with a little device like this. If I have rubber bands, I can put rubber bands around it so that while I'm doing the legs, I can do some arm exercises. For 20 bucks, it's about the best value you're gonna find out there. When you're finished with it, when you move past it, when you're back to walking and exercising outside, donate it, give it to somebody else who could use it. There's always people who are not as fit as you at that point. And so look for somebody who could use it. And what's
what's nice is it's just tiny. It's lightweight. It can sit in a corner until somebody needs to get it and do something with it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully this demonstration was, was useful in some capacity. Um, you guys know I love to hear from you, so keep me in the loop. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.